Yujin finishes his cooking and serves Yujin food. Yujin eats and compliments Yunjin's cooking, making his brother happy. Yunjin expresses his shock at learning that his brother knows how to cook. Yu Hyun admits that eating his own food is safer to avoid poisons and curses. Yujin was struck by realizing that some people did this to his brother. Yunjin gets angry and grabs his brother's face, scolding Yu Hyun for not telling him this. But Yu Hyun can only say that this is the path he chose. Don't worry, little bro. Big bro will protect you now. Yunjin admits that he regrets their falling out. He pretended he wasn't close to Yunjin so that people wouldn't exploit Yunjin. Yu Yun didn't want to burden Yunjin with this and thought Yunjin wouldn't understand. Learning that he was wrong, Yu Hyun is happy that his brother still cares and loves him, and the two enjoyed a meal together for the first time in a while. You guys should have just talked it out in the first place. They finished their meal, and Yu Hyun stood to get back to work. Before leaving, he ensured Yu Jin deleted the broker's contact information from his phone. As Yu Hyun leaves, Yun Jin says he'll take care of everything before leaving, making Yu Hyun pause. Yu Hyun then says that Yu Jin will stay with him from now on. He states that Yun Jin can't go outside, shocking our MC speechless. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out user year 8KZ9SS7S who commented more PDs on our Strongest Dark Lord video. Thanks for commenting. We have another broke on this time and it's worse. Yun Jin asks Yu Hyun what he means, and Yu Hyun even smiles, saying it's dangerous outside. Yu Hyun explains that now that they are close again, Yun Jin will not be safe anymore. Yun Jin's enemies will be all over him and he can't just let him wander outside. Yu Hyun reiterates that Yun Jin will now stay and live with him, the overprotective bro. Yun Jin makes a run for it, but bars start appearing out of nowhere, and a mover asks for his signature for bringing all of his stuff. We need instant movers like this in real life. Yu Hyun says that Yu Jin's place is now empty. Yun Jin tries to argue, but Yu Hyun reminds his brother's words of love and how he forgave Yu Hyun for his previous actions, meaning Yun Jin agrees to live together. Wow, saying I love you means you can live together immediately. Now Yun Jin is stuck in Yu Hyun's place with his stuff littering the place. He wonders if the reset affected his brother's head in treating him like a kid. Yun Jin takes some essentials and decides to bail, but as he opens the door, he sees the prominent figure of a man in a casual suit. The man glares at Yun Jin as he asks what he can help him with. Yun Jin identifies the glary man as Shong Hun Kim, an A-rank hunter of World's Edge that serves as Yu Hyun's right-hand man because of his defense skills. Yun Jin asks if he can get through, but Shong Hun refuses because it was the Guildmaster's instructions to keep Yu Jin there. Yun Jin then argues, but Shong Hun threateningly tells him to go back inside. Yun Jin starts to get afraid like a rabbit before a bear, but a system interface appears as he thinks he can't back down. Yun Jin activates his L rank skill, fear resistance, removing the intimidation effects Shong Hun has on him. Oh, so that's how it works. Yun Jin stops fearing Shong Hun and tells him that detaining him like this is a crime. But Shong Hun only grabs him by his clothes and lifts Yun Jin up. Desperate, Yun Jin looks at his other skills and uses Promising Sprout. The use makes him stop and look at Shong Hun closely. Shong Hun is currently an A rank, but he can potentially become an S rank, and his S graded skills are locked. Yun Jin concludes that if Shong Hun becomes an S rank, World's Edge can have two S rankers. Yun Jin yanks on Shong Hun's head as he tries to unlock using his skill. The system informs him that the target is not under his influence. Yunjin needs to use the keywords and activate his My Kid is the Best skill to unlock his target's full potential. Yunjin thinks that having Shong Hun under his wings will grant him his freedom, but saying I love you to the A rank is somewhat cringe. Shong Hun starts to get irritated, but Yu Hyun refuses to give up. Yunjin draws a heart with his fingers, making Shong Hun only stare. Yunjin tries again, but this time with both hands and a wink, only making Shong Hun angry. He makes Yunjin go back inside. In the end, he can't say the keyword. Yun Jin can only fall to his arms and knees, thinking the keywords must be changed. Yu Hyun comes home, seeing an almost dead Yun Jin in a mess. Yu Hyun takes his brother from the floor, commenting how he still hasn't unpacked. Yun Jin weakly answers that he's only a prisoner. Yu Hyun says he'll eventually let his older brother out. This snaps Yun Jin from his stupor. Yu Hyun explains that Yun Jin will be free once World's Edge becomes the most powerful guild in the country. Yu Hyun promises that it will only take a year. Still. Yun Jin gets depressed because he knows this took Yu Hyun three years to accomplish. Yu Hyun promises he'll still let his brother leave the house as long as Shong Hun or he is there to watch over Yun Jin. But Yu Hyun retracts, saying he can't always take his brother out because clearing the dungeon can take several days. Yu Hyun treats his brother like a pet that needs his walk. The thought pales Yun Jin, and he tries to find a solution using his abilities and knowledge as a regressor. He knows the hunters that will reach the highest rank, and if he contracts with them, they can be his bodyguards. He can even stop Yu Hyun from bossing him around. If he can do this, 
Yunjin announces that he'll find an A ranker. Yu Hyun looks at his brother in confusion, and Yunjin confirms he will. While Yunjin thinks about finding an A ranker or an S ranker that he can easily sway and sweet talk, outside in an alley, a girl with poor clothes and shoes looks up at the sky, foreshadowing Yunjin's new recruit. Yu Hyun asks Yunjin how he'll find an A ranker himself. Yunjin fumbles and Yu Hyun leers at his brother, stating that Yunjin has awakened. Yu Hyun starts barraging Yu Jin with questions about how he awakened. Yunjin panics and thinks about how he can't tell the truth to his brother, or he'll be locked up forever. Yunjin then tells Yu Hyun that he's only an F rank at most. He can predict whether a person's ranking will be high or low, and how awakening is limited to only once a month. Yu Hyun thinks about it and admits that it's not enough to make Yunjin a target. Still, Yu Hyun even says that Yu Jin's abilities will soon be obsolete because of the development of an awakening center. The center will help people have a safe awakening. Yu Jin smiles and says his skills are useless, so Yu Hyun should let him go out and find himself an A ranker. Yu Hyun finally agrees, but insists that Yu Jin should still stay at his place. Yu Jin is ecstatic about getting Yu Hyun's permission. He gets ahead of himself, thinking he can create a guild greater than his brother's. Yeah, but he still has his brother as a warden. The next day, Yu Jin accompanied by Sanhan, goes to the Korean Hunters Association Awakening Registration Center. The place is a mouthful, so let's just call it the Registration Center. In the future, people are abuzz with anticipation, thinking he's accompanying a new big shot hunter. Nothing to see here, people. Yunjin registers, and everyone learns he's only an F rank. People keep muttering, even commenting that Yunjin pretended to be an S rank. Well, not his fault. You all jumped to the wrong conclusion. Yunjin takes out an envelope that Yu Hyun gave him as pocket money for purchasing equipment. His eyes go big when he sees it's one billion one. Yunjin's insane, but I want to be his brother. Yunjin heads to the hunter's mall on the sixth floor and is welcomed by the staff. They show him equipment meant to increase his magic power, but those were too flashy for his taste. He takes the studs of a dark fairy, which adds 29 magic power. Manticore leather gloves add 61 stamina and 20 strength, and a light fabric belt adds 16 dexterity. Then, Yu Jin spends the rest of his money on contracts, potions, and more. He's basically a pay-to-win player. Shong Han was waiting for Yu Jin downstairs by the car. Shong Han questions where Yu Jin has been and reminds him to always tell him where he's going. The two of them were about to go, but Yu Jin said they still had somewhere to go. Yu Jin thinks about the ice witch, Yerim Park, who lives around the area. He remembers that she used to live with relatives. Yerim was a well-known A ranker before the reset, so getting her will satisfy his brother. Yurim is to awaken three years from now when she turns 18, so meeting and making her sign a contract while she's barely in high school would be good for him. She's probably the girl previously shown at the end of chapter 7. Yunjin visits different barbecue places and asks people about Yurim, but everyone he's asked so far says no. Yunjin eats a corn dog and asks Yonghan if they should just eat there. Then he sees a girl shouting at an older man. The girl bumps into Yunjin as she leaves, and Yunjin finally identifies the girl as Yurim. Yep, it's her, all right. Yunjin passes his corn dog to Xionghan and runs after her. It was only possible because he equipped the light fabric belt. After some turns, Yunjin finally spots Yurim and calls for her. Yurim ignores Yunjin and just runs away to the streets. She stops when a loud honk and flash of lights come from a running vehicle. Yunjin leaps and saves Yurim from getting hit. Nice, for a second there I thought Yurim would become an isekai heroine. Yunjin asks if Yurim is okay and laments how he didn't land with a heroic pose. Yerim sits on Yunjin's back with a foot on his face as she asks him if he's a hunter. Yunjin says he'll explain, but she should move first. It could have been a more awkward position than that. And Korean barbecue sizzles, and Yunjin drools as he looks at it. The art is so good that it's making me drool like Yunjin. Yunjin tells Yerim to dig in while thinking that it was a good thing that he brought the corporate card. The two start talking, and Yerim confirms that Yunjin is the Heian Guildmaster's older brother, and she wonders why Yunjin is recruiting someone like her. Yerim doesn't really believe Yunjin and decides to leave. Yujin stops her by claiming that he knows Yerim's parents who used to help him and his brother when their own parents passed away. Yunjin wants to repay them by helping Yerim out. Yerim returns to eating and says Yujin's okay since he's not trying to rip her off. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.